today i will be discussing with you radiology of bronchiectasis with little bit of clinical background also what is bronchiectasis you know presence of permanent and abnormal dilatation of one or more of the conducting airways so you have understood that this is a shot of a permanent disease if you see the etiology of bronchiectasis what can cause bronchiectasis it has multiple etiologies it could be post infectious which is supposed to be the most common and post infectious is bacterial infection even tuberculosis you know in tuberculosis which occurs at the most common at upper zones so when in tuberculosis bronchiectasis occurs that is also known as bronchiectasis sicca it means that since upper lobes are very well drained segments or lobes so this sputum usually does not collect there so there is no expectoration so what these patient they do complain they complain about hemoptysis so that is also the, this type of bronchiectasis is also known as bronchiectasis sicca dry bronchiectasis then you know even non tubercular mycobacteria can cause bronchiectasis you know aspergillus species with the name of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is can produce bronchiectasis even virus can produce bronchiectasis we don't know when even even covid when there is a lung involvement when there is a fibrosis some of them may turn into the bronchiectasis we don't know even but previously it is known that especially the measles virus influenza virus chicken pox virus small pox virus post infective they can produce bronchiectasis and then uh, there could be a mucous ciliary clearance defect as you know uh, it is congenital condition and and most, mostly the primary ciliary dyskinesia even cystic fibrosis and young syndrome in which there is azoospermia can cause bronchitis then immunodeficiency like hypocalcemia can also cause uh, this bronchiectasis then sickly of the toxic inhalation or respiration uh, aspiration or local or even bronchial obstruction foreign body may sometimes can create the bronchiectasis this is in history actually this this etiology is for history taking when you take you take care of these then autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis sle jogren syndrome can also cause bronchiectasis change then other congenital anomalies like tracheobronchomegaly what is known as monier kun syndrome cartilage deficiency that william campbell syndrome and marfan syndrome these are the congenital which may be associated with bronchiectasis and there could be other reasons like elonel syndrome and alpha and antisepsis deficiencies even really the fibrosis you know traction bronchiectasis you talk of so even fibrosis like ipf sarcoidosis post irradiation they can also lead to bronchiectatic changes so these are what i'm trying to say why i have come to these etiologies because when you take history from the patients you may come across these all histories in your bronchiectasis patient radiologically as i said my main uh, job is to talk about radiology so radiologically there are this this is a normal bronchus i can see here and then this is a cylindrical means just cylindrically the bronchus dilates this is a varicose jaise bilkul rassi jaise hoti hai us tarah ki dikhti hai and then cystic so the, this these are three common types of uh bronchiectasis which are visible in the radiology and i talked to you before also that uh, as far as if somebody ask you in exam what are the findings in 
chest X-ray as per bronchiectasis is concerned. I said that uh, bronchiectasis chest X-ray is not very sensitive investigation. And it is also known that 12 to 15% of the cases of bronchiectasis may have normal X-ray. Patient will have bronchiectasis by CT scan if you do, but X-ray may not be, it may be normal. Then there could be a lot of findings. And first finding, I always say early changes is the increased bronchovascular markings with, with hurdle, with crowding of those markings and that particularly in a localized area. As you have to understand that bronchiectasis is usually a localized disc, maybe generalized sometimes, but usually it is a localized disc. And so you will find increased bronchoscular markings in localized area, bronch dilated bronchus, thickened bronchus, what you also call as tram track sign, signet ring shadows you may detect, Reticular nodular shadows sometimes, cystic lesion, cystic bronchiectasis, sometimes often with fluid level, required impactions you may see, you may say evidence of consolidation, and in consolidation, two more phenomena we talk of with bronchiectasis. One is uh, recurrent pneumonia at the same site, wherever there is a bronchiectatic changes, at the same time, the, the, the secretions collect there, so infection goes also there. So pneumonia may occur at the same site. And when pneumonia occurs, usually because of bronchiectasis, it may be slow resolving. So fibrosis collapse may happen with long lasting bronchiectasis. And sometimes if one a lobe or whole lobe, whole lung is affected, there could be compensatory emphysema. So these are the practically X-ray changes by which you can suspect that, yes, you are seeing a case of. Now I will share you those, uh, some cases uh, depicting all these findings. As you see that uh, he was 65 year old. Uh, he was professor in Lucknow University and he had cough expectoration 40 years, recurrent hemoptysis 40 years. He was a chronic smoker overall. So you can see if this, if this much of history, it is clear that he, he was suffering from COPD from 40 years because of his smoker, or he may be suffering from bronchiectasis, both ways. Because of the recurrent hemoptysis, chances are only COPD people does not have such a recurrent hemoptysis. So he had many courses of ATT in between without any response because his symptoms continued to occur. Clubbing was not there, but only finding in the physical examination was coarse crepes present in the left in prescriptive. What I'm trying to say, if the history is typical, in this case, you see history is for last 40 years. It means at the age of 25, he started all this illness. And he had, uh, uh, and, and, and he has, Four scraps at one of the bases. That is to me, that is very typical history for bronchiectasis. And even when we did his X-ray, X-ray, one thing was clear that X-ray is showing evidence of overinflation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So overinflated chest. Diaphragm has come down. But no evidence of any, no other, any other evidence of bronchiac, suggesting bronchiectasis was not there. That's why I said in a typical history, if you find X-ray normal, still bronchiectasis could be there. So next investigation, what do you think? I went for CT scan and you can find CT thorax has shown definitely a localized bronchiectasis. He had a massive hemop recurrent hemoptysis. I asked the professor, are you ready for surgery? Because you know, such a localized disease having a recurrent symptoms. Yes, surgery may be done, but he was 65. He said, no, no, I'll not go for surgery. So we, we just continued on the medical treatment. And as far as treatment is concerned, let me talk to you here. 
treatment usually of bronchiectasis is consist of three four parts one is that you have to advise postural drainage and other physical physiotherapies just to drain that particular segment in your know, particular segment a low dilated bronchus lot of stagnation so that postural drainage you should know and you should advise the patient that is one first way of treating them and that is most important the second way of treating control of infection you may have suppose person is having cough with large amount of expectoration you may use antibiotics and in some of the patients where there is a chronic colonization with the especially pseudomonas and other bacteria then you may you may use a long term antibiotic i have seen the use of long term antibiotics when the symptoms and everything improves so that was and the third method of treating the so first is physiotherapy or postural drainage control of infection and then you have to treat the disease suppose somebody has avp of course you have to treat the avp also apart from bronchitis so and then prevention is also important you can you can use vaccination to prevent the recurrent attacks of infection and then finally in some of the patients you may require surgery so these are the basic issues in the treatment of bronchitis so the, you can see another x ray where here you find that the markings are prominent in a localized area on both bases that also i know it was case of bilateral bronchitis again similar thing the disease is localized here here you can see even some cystic spaces with fluid levels so they are all proven cases of bronchitis as you can see here also the, the beauty of radiology is disease is usually localized as the definition says here also find some some disease whatever is disease is localized here 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 at the basis and you know site of the bronchiectasis bronchiectasis is most common in lower zones lower lobes then comes next comes middle lobe or lingula and the least common in upper lobes so that is how the site so that's why most of the finding you get in the lower lobes and you see that cystic type of bronchiectasis of the same patient in ct thorax you may see that uh, again you find here there are there are localized changes and again you see that lot of cystic changes with fluid level is visible there are all known cases of i was talking one of you that uh, the viral infection may expose to to development of bronchitis I, i as you see this patient very his face tells that he had suffered from small these are the pox marks although small pox has been eradicated eradicated but he was about 50 year old man so he suffered during his childhood when small pox at that time was there and he had lot of complications to this small pox you can see the corneal opacity is also visible and that made me to think that he is but unfortunately he received many course of antibiotics anti tuberculous drug even only because of these shadows so i also say that bronchiectasis since shadows radiologically it mimics sometimes tuberculosis although tuberculosis in lower zones is not very common but well sometimes it can happen so he received multiple courses without any response but i know that here i can see that disease is localized and you can see the the bronchiectasis was present in the middle lobe and in the lower lobes both the lobes are affected here and uh, and here you see this case where you find there is some although x ray see something somewhere here some cystic spaces and if you see that ct scan so this is upper lobe so as i said site wise most common is lower lobes middle lobe and lingula is the next common site and upper lobe is a rare site but is rare means not you will never get yes you can get most of the post tubercular bronchiectasis i i told you bronchiectasis sicca they are usually confined to the upper lobe this is another lady uh, if you see carefully uh, you find arrow is there 
you find there's a shadow behind the heart so it, we also call as double heart border here and this was representing collapse as i said collapse may also happen in bronchiectasis this lady presented believe me when she came to me she has already received three or four courses of anti tb drugs her she is her symptom was only recurrent massive hemoptysis so somebody even prescribed the drug resistant tuberculosis management but when she came to me i found that there was a collapse and i know collapse could be one of the finding long standing bronchiectasis there is a lot of fibrosis so collapse may happen in that particular lobe and see here this was a bronchography used to do in those days bronchography was done and uh, i was i was nitiate i was assistant professor in kgmc so the, you know these these dilated bronchus they have come closer that, that shows there is evidence of bronchiectasis and there is evidence of collapse also. and uh, you know upper lobe bronchus is quite quite normal dye has come into the upper lobe bronchus beautiful uh, bronchogram was done again you see this is the dilated left lower lobe bronchus with evidence of collapse so ultimately i know that she had massive hemoptysis so sir, i uh, i advise her that without surgery it is not since disease was localized and she had life threatening symptom so she she went she underwent for left lower lobe lobectomy and uh, i know that she is still okay so i said one of the causes for bronchiectasis could be allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillus so at this case i am going to show you a case of a very interesting case of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis where you could we, we could get bronchiectatic changes and in allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis bronchiectasis usually is called as proximal bronchiectasis usually has seen bronchiectasis occurring at the end of the bronchial tree but here in this case it is a proximal nowadays yeah do the this proximal word people are objecting but still we see most of the cases of abpa who have bronchiectasis and bronchiectasis is one of the very important sign in ct thorax and uh, and 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 then it would it usually they are proximal in nature <clears throat> you know this man came to me long back <clears throat> with a history of breathlessness and with this shadow somebody thought it could be tuberculosis it could be pneumonia but ultimately you see the x ray that shadow had disappeared with some treatment i am going to share with you later on after two months shadows had disappeared no att was given shadow has come here left upper jaw and then then it has moved to left middle zone it has moved to right middle zone again it has clear then it has moved again came in 93 with the shadow in right middle zone and upper zone came here in the left so what i'm shown you in last 10 12 years he has walking pneumonia. pneumonia probably has walked this is also known as fleeting shadows i named is walking pneumonia and and has lot of publication with this patient and uh, you know what prompted me to think that he could be case of abp is simply eosinophil count if eosinophil count was 14% that prompted me he could be a case and history of asthma these are two things prompted me to diagnose history of asthma background history of asthma and he was no fake and everything is put on um, was negative fungus was positive skin test we did against aspergillus group we found positive type 1 and type 3 reaction and uh, then bronchography used to do you see bronchi usually bronchiectasis will be one peripheral bronchiectasis will be here here you see these are the bronchiectatic changes seeing so no is proximal bronchiectasis and you know ct we, we caught hold of him in 2007 because 88 there was no ct scan in kgmc so caught hold of him and you can see clearly looking uh, uh bronchiectatic changes and that too proximally 
they are proximal bronchitis. So ultimately, this was again you see multiple bronchitis cases are there. So it was diagnosed as allergic bronchitis. So this, as I said, that this is one of the known causes of allergic bronchopulmonary bronchitis is allergic bronchitis. This is another case, so I believe, is very interesting. He was 22 year male, had some had his had background history of breathlessness seven year, but had he streaking six months back. He went to some doctor. I don't know because of these shadows. He was prescribed anti-TB drug for six months without any response. And when he when he when he finished finished six months of treatment, his he got the x-ray done after six months. Every one of you will agree that the shadows had increased. And so somebody thought it could be an MDR-TB. Although at that time, this was a difficult term. But again, you see, eosinophil was 30% here. Tune of 30%. And again, in this patient, sputum was negative. What I thought, he was referred to me, I thought if the sputum is positive with seven exten extensive lesion, it can't be TB. But then same time I got eosinophil raised, so I suspected. Skin test was positive as aspergillus fumigatus type 1. Ig was in tune of 34,000. I Specific Ig, E and Ig, Eg against aspergillus fumigatus was elevated. So all the diagnostic criterias, and you know there are again a uh, central bronchiectasis. So all the features were there, and we, we treated this patient with steroid because steroid is the mainstay of treatment. That's why I said if bronchiectasis you see and has a known etiology, then you have to treat that particular cause. Then a few more cases of, I would like to share with you should not confuse as a bronchiectasis. Here you see that although there are cystic changes are looking, but you know there are a lot of honeycombing and there are traction bronchiectasis. This is another term. But this is not you have to treat like bronchiectasis. You have to treat, you know, this condition is known as fibrosis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This was a classical example. Even in that case, you may get the bronchiectasis. Even other uh, uh, other ILDs type, like here also you may find some of the cystic spaces, but then this lady had clubbing also. And again, you see a lot of cystic spaces are visible. So this is a cystic type of a ILD, and this case was diagnosed as lympho, lymphangium myomatous lamb. So these are not actually cases of bronchiectasis, but they mimic bronchiectasis. That's why I focus some of the x-rays. And this is another male, 15-year-old male, had, uh, had, uh, had cough and uh, history of ATT two years back. Uh, he was non-smoker and inspiratory caps. And inspiratory caps tells you that, yes, there is ILD-like picture. In, in bronchiectasis, there will be coarse capitation. And in case of ILDs, there will be end inspiratory, well could type of capitation. And again, you find diffuse lung shadows is visible. But if you see then CT thorax, a lot of cystic spaces, but they are not bronchi, they are cystic type of ILD. And this was probably case. Again, you find a lot of cystic space. This is all lung and cell histories. They are all proven case. So what I'm trying to say, not all the cysts you are looking on the chest X-ray, RCT thorax may be bronchiectasis. If you want to diagnose bronchiectasis, what is what is my take home message? That uh, the you know bronchiectasis. If you are a good clinician, I used to say it takes about two minutes time to diagnose bronchiectasis. In terms of person, the say he will be symptomatic. Disease will start at early age usually. Disease will have cough with recurrently happening expectoration. Expectoration are usually of the large amount. So that history and there will be postural relationship. Of course, if the disease is localized in a one lobe, it means suppose it is localized on the right side. When patient lies on the left side, his cough and expectoration used to increase. So that is the history. And with this history, 
if you can get clubbing very good you, even clubbing may not be necessary but then if you auscultate the chest and find that there are coarse crepitation it is not velcro type <clears throat> this to me i'll say to me it is 100% case of bronchitis even x ray may be normal at this stage i will get ct scan done and will i'll definitely find evidence of bronchitis so that is the theory. so <clears throat> it's a clinical diagnosis although radiology x ray may help you may not help you and but the ultimately diagnosis is confirmed by ct scan and treatment i have already enumerated that usually it is the postural drainage is very important antibiotics are very important and then uh, treat the specific disease if you can diagnose and then finally in some of the patients you may require surgery especially when disease is localized and patient has life threatening with this thank you very much what i will just like to share we have lot of uh, uh, x rays uh, leading in youtube we have lot of interesting cases for that and we have a master class on chest x ray so thank you very much